Hello and welcome back to the channel. Typical Northern Irish weather. You've seen the rain earlier. Lashing out of the heavens and now the sun's splitting the trees. Typical. I was in Cork during the week uh, and a wee project planned for the channel uh, which will have to be put on the back boiler. It might be of interest to some of you, well for a few of us actually. And the plan then was to go from Cork to Valencia Island in County Kerry. But as soon as I finished my breakfast in Cork, the clouds gathered in and the rain came down and the rain did not stop the whole way to Valencia Island. And on Valencia Island, it actually got worse. And the only footage I was able to get was an attempt at uh, filming the, the dinosaur tracks. I'll uh, include that little clip. But uh, rather a disappointing and wasted dirt well, is it wasted or is it not? I got some, uh, some, some advantages out of it, I suppose. Um, not least uh, uh, additional contacts in Cork, which uh, will be revealed if this little project comes to fruition. So I'm actually here to do, or to do a two year review on this jacket that I'm wearing now, the Fjall Raven number eight. Now, I'd done a review on it uh, a couple of years ago. Well, so much as a, an overview, couldn't really do a review because uh, I'd only got it. But having used it for two years, um, I'm extremely pleased with it. It's a great jacket, and I'll go over some of the, the main things, main features that I like about it. And uh, it might be something that someone is considering. Now, it depends on the type of camping you do. The, Wild camping genre is mixed and varied. You have the, the hikers who like to go to peaks and bivy or camp on the peaks. And then my preferred genre is the camping uh, bushcraft type setup in forests, lakesides and rivers. Uh, that's what I enjoy the most. Um, but yeah, I'll give me a wee look around it again and give you my thoughts on it and how wear and tear has affected it. I can actually still smell the smoke on it from last time I was down at Rob's camp, Rob's place. I like that. Uh, I don't think I have a, any article of clothing that I use for wild camping and it's not smelling of smoke and the campfire. <laughs> So, <laughs> hold on to I do a Mary Poppins here. I'm actually on Valencia Island and the intention was to do a wild camp. I was in, come down to Middleton in Cork last night with a view to completing a wee project for the channel, which I'm gonna have to put on the back burner. Uh, those of you who know Martin, Miriam, Ben, Rob, that'll be put on the back burner. Something of interest uh, probably to a few folks. Uh, the idea was to, <laughs> was to do a wild camp on Valencia, but I'm actually walking down to the coast here, to the tetrapod tracks. Uh, that's uh, 350 million odd years old dinosaur footprints <laughs> that were discovered a while back. So. Uh, We'll have a look at that when we get down here. Unfortunately, the weather came down last night. It was Mediterranean, it was lovely. But today, I will take off here in a minute. Bloody hell. Uh, today, as you can probably gather, it's 
anything but ideal. So I'll talk to you when I get down here before I do take off. Very interesting indeed. I have my fishing umbrella here and I'm actually having trouble trying to keep it steady. <laughs> Let you know the, how strong the winds are. So we'll go down and see if we can find these tracks. <laughs> Hardly Jurassic Park, but interesting nonetheless. So the Fjall Raven number eight anorak, as it is described by Fjall Raven. Now, if we start at the top, the hood, it has the wire strip around it, so you can actually adjust it. But the huge is massive, and that will cocoon you inside in really bad weather. And I have used it in really bad weather, and it is absolutely amazing for that. As you can see, mine is men's size large, and I deliberately got the large one. There's no thermal properties, really, of the material, which is uh, Fjall Raven's own G1000 and Eco 1000. Um, I put on a big rab, a uh, thick pile fleece underneath it in the winter months, and combine that with the hood. It is amazing. Now, the material is not waterproof. Uh, you'll get some water resistance out of it, and if you wax it, uh, you will get a little bit more water resistance, but then at a penalty, and the penalty is the breathability. The material is breathability or breathable, uh, but when you wax it, the breathability diminishes. Now, yeah, anorak number eight, etc. Now on the sides, you'll notice there's a couple of toggles. Uh, these zip up and down. So that goes, just trying to do this one-handed. Imagine that zip, top one stays up, bottom one goes right down, or you can bring then the top one down. And this is just basically ventilation, and then you can get access to your under layers, your trouser pockets or your jacket pockets. Um, with the hood down, you can unbutton, and you can button up the side here so you have like a sort of a, with the hood down, you have a nice neck protection the whole way around, which again, if it's mildly windy or just annoyingly windy, uh, without having to put the hood up, you can do that. Uh, the kangaroo pouch, if you ever lose lens caps or batteries or leads, you'll end, they'll end up in here. Quite a large, substantial kangaroo pouch for storing all sorts of bits and pieces in. Two side pockets then, which go the whole way through. I just call them sort of hand warmers. Um, on the reverse, you have uh, a toggle here for adjusting the, the size of the hood. You can cinch it in or you can cinch it out. Uh, just undo the Velcro and then tighten with the toggle. The same on the inside. The rear has this heavy duty Eco 1000, and that's for sitting down. And as you can see, there's no, virtually no wear and tear on that at all. It's been really excellent. Inside then, you have this, uh, if I can get it out, up here, there's like a tail uh, that'll clip out. And this'll go right between your legs and up the front, and that just stops the wind from blowing up your kyber. <laughs> So my thoughts on having used it for uh, two years 
And I have used it in particularly, it's, I mean, it's not something you're taking up the mountains, it's not mountain gear. It's for deep in the forests, scrambling through heavy bracken, uh, doing rough tasks, uh, chopping and cutting and whatnot. And basically it's, I was going to say a bargain, but I wouldn't say it's a bargain. It is a really, really cool piece of gear. But at the same time, you'll pay for it. Uh, and is it worth the money? That's a debate. If you've got the money and it's no option, then you'll buy one. But if you're one of these people who maybe, uh, like the majority of us, uh, maybe on a budget and counting the pennies, especially in this climate, uh, at a push at 450 quid sterling, at a push that's quite an investment. But two years in, and there's virtually no wear and tear on it at all. And as I say, in the winter months is when this comes out the most for me. Uh, in the winter months, um, it basically comes into its own. Uh, and as I say, I'll have a rab, uh, thick pile fleece underneath it, and that combined with the hood, toasty warm. And you can just sit there and look out at the world. It's like almost been in a baby tent <laughs> with that hood up. So yeah, is it worth the money? That's up to yourself. Um, is it an awesome piece of kit that would serve you well for years to come? Yes, it is. Uh, loaded with features, etc., etc. But as I say, the price, well, most of the fuel rather than light, well, most of any of the branded uh, gear um, is quite expensive. Um, but the old adage, uh, buy cheap, buy twice, uh, I think comes to the fore. But certainly it worked for me, and I wouldn't be at a wild camp in the woods without it, um, especially in the winter anyway. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I mean, I do use quite a lot of branded stuff, and I also have a lot of mid-range stuff. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested, especially those who are maybe uh, wanting to start into wild camping and the like. Uh, if you would like some prosumer type tents, uh, like of the Van Gogh Banshee 200 that I have, one of the first tents that I got. Uh, and everybody you see on the hills that have their, their fancy MSRs and their Abiscos and their, their Hellebergs, they all started off and they've all still got their Van Gogh, Van Gogh Banshee 100, or sorry, 200. Uh, which is a great, I still use them, I still bring it out, I must actually do a camp with it and bring it out sometime. But yeah, cheapest chips, uh, really, really good quality. Nope, I got hit in the head there with a swallow. It's funny, they were flat about there and they the, I expected when the rain came down that they would all come in. They all went out, it's, yay, it was fun, I did to get a shower. <laughs> so yeah, if you're interested in uh, some of the basic things, another wee line of uh, reviews I'm going to do, just to keep everything cheap for, uh, People maybe wanting to get into the, the past time and into wild camping. Uh, have a lot of our army surplus cooking gear and whatnot, which I'll, I'll look over and review, and a lot cheaper than the brand. So that's it for that's it for this video. And I shall I don't know where I'm going to be next. To be honest, I'm winging it. Probably down at Rob's place. But well, see it. Well, it will be down at Rob's place. I'm just off the phone with him there. So actually, look after yourselves. Look after each other. Catch us on the next one.